<laughs> yes! If you've been following along with Apocalypse Bingo, you can check the box for beavers having explosives. Oh look, he's trying to swim it out. He's swimming out the little explosive to be able to create this pond. Ah, oh, it's so good. Build it in. And light it up. Yes, we're now connected. We have a larger reservoir for what it's worth. If there's anything I love more than an explosives factory, it's gonna be two explosives factories. But as I also continue to try and expand my industry all on this single connected structure, I don't know if it's worth it. I'm gonna have to start doing some reorganizing and like taking out the builder's hut and then we could lay down the explosives factory over this stretch, kind of and we could finagle a bunch of platforms to be able to fit it in, or we could bite the bullet and just build it freestanding. It requires 150 horsepower input, which is not too bad. We could just hook it up to pretty much a single windmill and it should be fine. I use the explosives factory to make space for more explosives factories. Well, we are rolling straight into another 18 day drought and I mean, it's not like we have really improved things all that much from the last time that we had to do this take, so. We will see if our stockpiles are able to build up again. We are at close to where we were at the beginning of the 19-20 um, the day drought, so I think we're gonna be fine again. We also, basically with the terraforming ideas here, the point is to make a little pocket of deeper water that'll be able to irrigate the crops, whereas the rest of the flow here um, Part of it gets pulled out as waste or evaporation, um, whatever, to irrigate the surrounding area, and then it also gets pulled out in the water pumps to be able to fill the tankers. So when we have these kind of isolated pockets, the water will just be able to sit there to irrigate the crop and nothing more. So here it is in all its glory. This is when the riverbed would normally be completely dry and all of our fields actually drying out and dying. But here, with these little carve-outs, we're able to provide irrigation to a significant area, and we want to be able to bring this all the way around to keep the growing season as long as possible. And then the next play is also going to be taking this out to build a deeper reservoir over here as well. Um, and by the time that we have all of that blown away, we can start terraforming this to cut this out as like just a deeper lake is my goal. Oh yes, these little reservoirs are working like a charm. I mean, look at this, it's been several days and the water level has barely dropped at all. It seems like irrigating the crops in this way is super efficient. Oh, lighting off these dynamite chains is just so satisfying, look at that. Well, I was going to deepen these reservoirs that we have to irrigate the crops, but it is blocking me off, saying that it is too low, so we are at the point of actually drilling through the bottom of the map if we were to detonate any deeper. So, uh, good to know that this is our absolute lowest point that we have found it. It's right here, just one depth below what our river level already was, so we're built at a very low point here. I feel like expanding the reservoir, like long-term goals, long-term goals, the, there's these two banks here that are built up pretty high. If we could build levees all the way across this area, we would be able to build an enormous reservoir up here. And so we have sped up the um, gathering of all the scrap metal out of here from Scrapyard because this would all have to go, get relocated somewhere else, build the mega levy, and then we would have to uh, turn the engineering brain on and figure out how we could finagle getting floodgates to still use the entire depth of that reservoir if we were to build up to these banks. I have a couple ideas, but I'm not sure they would work. Okay, sure, sure, 23 day drought coming up. This is going to be the longest by a fair margin that we've had to endure up to this point. Hopefully these irrigation cutouts are the ticket. The pinch, I think, is really going to be in our water supplies. We have plenty of storage capacity that we are unfortunately not getting to use. We need more pumps to be able to replenish during the uh, the positive years. Or not years, the positive days. I don't know, because we have, what is, what is the conversion? Like dog years, beaver years, you know? 
Because if you select any of your like little population, let's find somebody right here. This guy is 78 years old. So is a cycle a year or is a quote unquote day a beaver year? I, I don't know. Oh, this drought has been driving me crazy. We were without a, a the ability to pump new water into our reservoirs for like two weeks. And we had an enormous reservoir, but now it's coming down to the wire. Two and a half days to go, 500 water in the bank. Do we squeak it out one more time, guys? Can we do it? Half a day and 80 water in the bank. We did it. It's so close. We had exactly what we needed exactly what we needed to make it through this time and now we have like doubled the number of water pumps that we have to be able to just flood our reservoir for the next drought oh there's all the thirst markers can we replenish in time we're starting to pump now oh no there it was we lost two Jiljin and Jelaya died of thirst. We will remember you and we will prepare to be built back. I'm a little worried about up here in Scrapyard because they didn't get pumping until a little bit later than the other district. But I think they're gonna be okay. Uh, this is pretty cool. The beavers can like fully dive to be able to set the dynamite underwater down here. And you can toggle the water to be able to see what they're doing. So it's pretty great. That one guy was thirsty while he was underwater. He's like, no, open your mouth. Open your mouth, you'll be fine. But I need to make it back to the water pump. No, just open your mouth. Now oh, a 20 day drought. They're giving us an easy one this time, an easy one. Okay, we have time lapsed quite a bit. Uh, never mind this giant barrier wall that's a project for another video, but now we are in for our finest hour. It is time to expand the reservoir. Ooh, is it is it more dramatic if I go from the edge or if I play from the middle? I think I have to go from the middle. Here we go. Yes! Ah! <laughs> I've destroyed my frame rate. <laughs> Oh, it's everything I wanted it to be. This game is amazing. If it was fun the first time, then do it again. <laughs> I can't process all the explosions. It just becomes smoke waving out over the area. You don't get the explosion except in the right middle. And it is finally finished. The reservoir has been expanded. If I had to guess, it's probably four times the size of what it was back when, way before we had any dynamite and just had the, the riverbed that we were filling up. So we've expanded it to be an entire lake here. And it is way, way better at being able to survive the droughts. We can last so much longer. I love this. It's now my bridge to nowhere. This had been the way we were getting to the other bank to be able to set the dynamite charges. And now it just leads right down into the lake bed. Oh, it's so satisfying watching all the beavers do the hard work for you. You get that feeling of just, you know, how much easier it is to watch somebody else working hard than when you have to work hard. And because we're building right here on the intersection of the two districts, they actually both have influence here, even though it, like, technically falls within Riverdale's territory because the gates are placed farther out. These workers are still able to come out and help, so the joint effort to build the new levee. 26 day long drought. This is not quite the big one, but... It's the, gonna be the longest that we've ever seen, and so this is gonna be the perfect test for seeing just how well our new reservoir is going to be able to serve us. Also, I kind of hope that it runs dry because I want to be able to rearrange these, knock these down, turn them into just levee walls, and uh, that would cause a nightmare of water management if there is still water in the reservoir. So maybe this will just empty us out, let me do my work, and then be time to just write to refill. Five days in and we have only had to take the reservoir down a half step, so things are looking pretty promising. 
for this reservoir being able to service us even through these much longer droughts. A little over 10 days into the drought and we are at only one unit of water remaining in the reservoir so it is looking like it's going to run dry. It's not going to last the entire drought. We have plenty saved up so that uh, we're not going to be on a starvation or dehydration warning but the reservoir is going to go completely dry which as I was saying earlier is probably going to be good for us to be able to do some work on our floodgate setup. Okay scaffolding is set up. We're draining off the last of the water now. Uh, I could just go ahead and knock these over, but I'll let it drain out slowly so that we don't burst the banks down here. Ooh, the little bit of waste there. That's all right. Okay, now to knock these over and replace them with just levees. We don't need this many floodgates. I was not quite prepared for how ridiculous this scaffolding was going to have to be to be able to build up this levee wall. <laughs> I guess I should have been knowing what I did to be able to build over here, but uh, yeah, this is getting extravagant. In terms of the drought though, we still have water down here alongside Riverdale and we have only five days to go. So that means our reservoir so far has lasted 20 days or 21 days and counting. Water has run dry with four days to go, so that is very close fit. Doesn't quite run all the way, but still takes us right up to the end of the drought. I think at this point, Scrapyard, our expansion district here, has given us pretty much everything that it is able to provide. We've expanded the reservoir to be enormous. We have cleared away all of the scrap metal, and we are still processing some of it into blocks over here. And then I set up another uh, shredder over here to be able to make more metal blocks within Riverdale itself. So we're shipping over scrap metal and completed river or metal blocks at this point. As you may have guessed from all of the levy that I have been building and working on, my next project idea is to turn this entire basin into a reservoir. It would be able to overflow into all of the area that Scrapyard is right now and go several, uh, several blocks up and be able to hold vastly more amounts of water, but it's going to require a fair bit of testing slash research on my part to be able to get it just right to the way that I want it because I'm going to have to see if there is a way that you can devise multiple floodgates or if I'm going to have to have some kind of uh, smaller basin here that it will like feed down into. I don't know what that's exactly going to look like, but I have a couple ideas on how I can potentially do it. We are also going to have to see if we need to levy off this entire space next to the edge of the map. We don't lose water directly above the water sources, but I wonder if it will just run off the edge of the map once it overflows these banks. Because like here at the end of the river, it'll just flow directly off. And so I'm not sure if they have like invisible designated river endpoints where that happens, or if that'll just happen at any point at the edge of the map. I would love to see the Beaver Elementary Schools where like a large part of their science curriculum deals with what happens right off the edge of the world because <laughs> they come, they live right up next to it. But all of these expansion projects are going to be a subject for another video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment if you have answers or guides for how you think that I can devise multiple floodgates or what I'm going to have to do at the edge of the map here. And subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one.